Hi, welcome to the channel. This is the Legally Blind Geek YouTube channel where we focus on overcoming low vision challenges. My name is Mike. Today we're going to discuss 10 ways iPhone voice assistant, yes, Siri, helps visually impaired people overcome low vision challenges. Yeah, a visually impaired person, be they legally blind, dark blind, or just suffering from some age-related vision loss, can really accomplish a lot using Siri. Kind of interesting? I'm sure you're going to find out something you didn't know Siri can do. Check it out. Here we go. When I was putting this together, I came up with seven everyday tasks that I ask to do. And I know a lot of other folks do as well, especially the visually impaired community. Whether we are legally blind like myself, dark blind, or even a lot of folks that uh, are struggling with age-related vision loss can get a lot of benefit from just using Siri. I've been using it for several years now. I started using the iPhone voice assistant when I first went from the old Android phones to the smart Apple iPhones. I started with the 4S, then the 5, and then I went to the 7 Plus, which I still have, still use. I still have all of them, actually. I just don't use the 4 and the 5 any longer. I do use the 7 Plus every day. I also have a 10s Max that I use every day. That's what I'm recording this video on, by the way. And I have the 14 Pro Max that I got, you know, not quite a year ago, 10 months ago, 11 months ago, as my daily driver. And uh, there are things that I use Siri for every day. So the top seven is what I'm going to mention. And then I've got some bonus ones that we're going to talk about that are, you know, 10, 11, all told. But I'd like to hear from you. What do you think about the iPhone voice? Why don't you post that information for me in the comments section down below. I'd like to hear from you what you think. I'm going to share what I think in this video. Okay? Sound fair? Even trade? If you want to check out the description box down below, I will go and put some chapters in there to make it simpler to, for you to go through the 10 or 11 things that we mentioned one by one or back and forth, whichever you prefer. I'll also post some links in there that are affiliate links for some uh, low vision devices that I like, I know, I recommend. And basically the links are there. If you follow the link and you purchase something, I'll make a couple of pennies. If not, more importantly, I include these links for information purposes. So you can look and you can see what these items are. You can read some of the um, stuff that they have to say on them, you know, the reviews and whatnot on Amazon, you know, whether it's a five star, four star, whatever kind of thing. Yes, let's get into the seven everyday tasks that I use Siri for all the time. Hey Siri, hmm? what's the weather conditions? It's currently partly cloudy and 72 degrees. Expect clear skies starting tonight. Temperatures are heading down from 75 to 68 degrees tonight. Thank you. What is the weather forecast for this weekend? Looks like there will be cloudy skies and clear skies this weekend. Daytime temperatures will start around 85 degrees and eventually fall to 79, with overnight lows between 57 and 61 degrees. Thank you. Of course. So that is number one. And the reason that you hear voiceover in the background reading the weather conditions again is because I have a widget in the top of my screen and the top widget that I've got is weather. Imagine that. So moving right along to number two, the second test that I most frequently use Siri for is to check and edit reminders. I use it all the time to help me remember to uh, make it a, an appointment. You know, whether I have to go to a doctor, the dentist, or I have a phone call, or I have somebody coming to pick me up to take me somewhere at a certain time, I will set a reminder. And it, it's just as simple as, a, hey Siri, uh -huh. set 10 minute timer. 10 minutes, starting now. Thank you. You're welcome. Pause button. 
so Actually, not not only can I use it to do you know appointments and stuff like that, I can have it set you know that timer to let me know if like if I'm going for a walk or I'm doing some kind of a workout. Number three on the list is check complete send and receive text messages. So basically, I can just say, "Hey Siri." Mm-hmm. Send my wife a text message asking what she would like to do for dinner. I don't see a wife in your contacts. What is your wife's first and last name? Okay. Want me to remember that Kelton is your wife? Yes. Okay. Kelton is your wife. To Carolyn, what she would like to do for dinner. Send it. Yes. Done. I could also ask it for information relating to messages, like what was the last text message that my wife sent me. And now that she knows that Carolyn is my wife's name, I can say my wife's name, or I can say my wife, and she realizes what I want to do or who I want to communicate with, which I think is pretty cool. So I guess that's part of that AI. Moving right along to number number four. Okay is make phone calls or check on voicemails. And basically I do the same thing. I just say, hey Siri, or now with the iOS 17 that bit, I just have to say Siri and she'll ask me what I want to know. Fun stuff, isn't it? Yes, it is. Always listening, always comes up with some kind of response, even if it's inappropriate. So you gotta be careful what you ask for. Yeah, anyway, number five. Check, create, and edit notes. For me, that comes in pretty handy when I am doing something out in the yard and I want to get uh, some plant, a shade-loving plant, or some fertilizer, or something. I'll just say, hey, Siri, add peat moss to my gardening shopping list. And it will do that for me. Or I can ask it to add, you know, Brussels sprouts to my shopping list for the kitchen. I name these different lists, these different notes. I mention these notes by name and ask Siri to add something to them. And she'll do that. I can also ask to open that note. She will do that. So it makes it a lot quicker and a lot easier for me, a lot of times, instead of going through and checking through all these menus or checking through all these screens and trying to find the appropriate icon and open that up, I just say a simple phrase. Works most of the time. Let me put it that way. Since it is a, a Wi-Fi kind of thing and it's not an on-device kind of thing for a lot of the questions, a lot of the queries that she has to go find the information for, where I live, I am always having problems with the internet. So when the internet's down... No bueno. Just doesn't work very well. When internet is up and around and doing its thing, she does a very good job of that. And um, it doesn't seem to switch back and forth between data and Wi-Fi when I'm in the house. Now, when I'm out and about, sometimes it has a problem finding a tower or whatever it is. It'll come back with, hey, I can't do that right now. But that's just one of the downsides to moving right along. Number six is check for and edit emails. So it's one of those things, again, you just say, hey Siri, send so-and-so an email. Easier for me. In addition to that, I can also say, hey, open Gmail. And for the most part, it works. It gets me there. It saves a few steps. It makes it quicker. Number seven. Number seven is pretty common to ask silly questions. Well, not necessarily silly questions, but as I'm out and about and I'm doing things and I want to find out where or what or when something happened, I can just ask Siri. Hey Siri, Hmm? what is the capital of Nebraska? The state capital is Lincoln. When was Lincoln established? The first state capital was completed in 1868. Lincoln Incorporated on April 1st, 1869. Who was the first governor? Governor, David Butler National Governors Association. David Butler, the first governor of Nebraska, was born near Bloomington, Indiana, on December 15, 1829. His education was limited and attained in the common, ellipsis, 
NGA.org. So those are, the, those are the, the seven everyday tasks that I ask of Siri. Now for a few bonus questions or bonus features that are tasks, if you will. And, and the first one of those is open and play something from a music library. Hey Siri. Hmm? Play soft jazz. Now playing chill jazz. Pause button. Play. And, and the next thing is, for me anyway, and I do this on occasion because a lot of times I just ignore notifications, but I have it set up so that it will speak notifications. I'll get the notification, it'll ding, and then it'll just tell me what that notification is. And if I want to, I can respond to it say, Hey, okay, forget that, ignore that, or call back or whatever the note, whatever's appropriate for that notification. You can do that via Siri. Uh, number three, or the, uh, I guess the, the 10th item that we're going to call it the third bonus section is as, asking for directions. And it comes in handy. You can use that if you're walking, if you're biking, if you're riding in a car. I did all the time when my wife gets lost and we're trying to find some place, especially when we're going to one of those uh, places where we're going to a softball tournament we've never been to before. We've got the address and for whatever reason, mm, I'm not going to say my wife has got lost, but maybe we just taking the scenic route. Yeah, that's it. We're taking the scenic route. And for some reason, the scenes just don't match up with what we're looking for. Okay. I can go in and I can say, use the magic words, directions to such and such address. And it, as long as I've got good cell connection and the data is working, it will pop up on, you know, Apple maps and give me directions to, and give me the amount of time it's going to take to get there. And it's gotten pretty good at that, and in addition to that, it will, I guess if the states or whatever are doing their job and they've got all this stuff posted properly, it will let you know if there's a detour or if there's construction or these kinds of things that you need to work around, which also helps you give you an idea of what to look for. You know, if you get some detour that you're seeing, well, that's probably what, you're probably in the right place anyway. And um, one more, just for fun, or asking Siri to tell you a joke. Hey Siri, uh -huh. tell me a joke. I went into a pet shop and asked for 12 bees. They handed me 13 and said, the last one is a freebie. There you go. I asked and I received. So I hope you found this useful. I hope you've learned something about Siri. I would really like to learn something from you as well. So please, by all means, use the comment section provided below this video and share your observations, share your thoughts. If you like the voice assistant, you don't like the voice assistant, you'll never use the voice assistant or you use it sometimes and you only use it to check out what the weather is. It's all good. I appreciate your time. Thanks for sticking with me and make sure to check out the description for links. I think you'll find useful. Give us a thumbs up. You know somebody that could benefit from this information? Share it with them. Consider subscribing. I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm.